Welcome to Permission to Shift. Today's guest is Jackie Woodside. With 27 years of experience as a professional coach and trainer, Jackie is passionate about excellence. Most specifically, she's passionate about the consciousness that creates excellence. She's written over 20 training curriculums for coaches to deliver to their clients and for leadership training. She's a certified professional coach, three-time best-selling author, TEDx speaker, radio and television personality, and seminar leader. Jackie is passionate about expanding the edge of human potential, and she's a financial vibration wizard, helping people shift their money vibration and change their financial lives. She's the founder of the Curriculum for Conscious Living, the Conscious Living Summit, and she's a licensed psychotherapist with 30 years experience in both fields. It's my pleasure and my honor to welcome Jackie to the show today. Well, it is awesome to have you here today, Jackie. Thank you so much for joining me for the interview. Oh, there, you know, I have to say there's like very few things I would rather be doing than spending the afternoon with you. I love your work. I love your energy. I love your vibe. So thank you for having me. Thank you for just doing, you know, creating this space. I'm so excited about your YouTube channel because I know you are a person who's out there raising the vibe on the planet and that speaks right to my heart. Thank you so much. That's such a generous way to begin your interview. No, no, it's all you, baby. It's all you. <laughs> well, let's talk to the audience. For the people out there who don't know who you are and <laughs> what it is you do and what Money Vibe is, can you give us a little bit of an overview of how you got where you are and, and what you did? Sure, sure. I call that the who the hell is Jackie Woodside and why should I care factor. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, right. So yeah, so we've written uh, three books and just contributed the a, a fourth a compilation book that became a USA Today bestselling uh, book. So I'm a USA Today bestselling author. I've got an article coming out about that tomorrow. So I'm excited. Oh, congrats. About that. That's I amazing. do. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, anyway, so a little bit about me. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, like, Jackie, how did you how did you get into this? And how did you get into writing about time and money and, and all of these things that you're into and vibration? Um, so let's just say I didn't pop out like this. <laughs> um, um, I didn't pop out thinking about my vibe and consciousness. And in fact, you know why I'm so passionate about being a consciousness teacher about money and time and life is because it's what saved my life. I don't know how else to say it. I'd just be straight up, you know? So, um, Oh, I had the family life that I had, but but my mom was widowed when I was really young, and she kind of managed that as best she could by working a lot of hours and drinking a lot of alcohol and taking her anger out on uh, on us. And so it was it was a ride. And I um you know I I thrived quite honestly. I was very involved in uh, athletics and sports and Catholic ministry, and I just had a I just got out, you know, I just did what I needed to do, played sports all through college. So I, I, my professional background actually is as a clinical social worker. And I think I went into that field. Of, I was a psychotherapist and a clinical manager for many years in a lot of different places. I think I needed to kind of heal myself and do mm -hmm. my own healing journey. And, and then, you know, 30 years of being a psychotherapist, I was pretty much done. <laughs> I also was a coach for 30 years. Um, got into the coaching field later, about five years into, after being a psychotherapist. I was an old school coach. I was trained by Coach U early on, um, and then IPAC later. So I've done two different coach certification programs, and I love the coaching field. So about 10 years ago, I just said, I, you know, I, it actually wasn't that simple. I'd felt the calling for many years. I had written a mission statement 10 years prior that I was too afraid to activate on. Um, and the mission statement was it, was, it was just the very essence of who I am, like the, at a soul level. And it came to me, and I was doing a program at Landmark Education, and it came to me. And it's, I'm a torchbearer for a vision of a world transformed, illuminating freedom, fulfillment, and passion, igniting the flame of infinite possibility for the human spirit. So that's my mission. That's who I am. That's who I came here to be. And... I couldn't do anything with it. So I didn't tell anybody for like 10 years that, I, that this was my mission and this is what I came here to be. I would, and nobody would have like watched the movie and been like, that Jackie, she's playing small. She's afraid. But I was, I was afraid to step into the power of that mission statement. So um, 
I was sitting in a church service one day after this 10 years of uh, what am I going to do? And I'm too afraid and I'm not sure. And all of that I was sitting in a, a unity church service in Kingsbury, Massachusetts with a little sprite of a minister who was up delivering the, a powerful message. And she spoke from the Gnostic gospel of Thomas. And she said, if the quote was, if what, if, if what you have within you comes through you, it will save you. And if what is within you does not come through you, it will destroy you. And I was like, oh, wow. That's what's happening to me. Mm-hmm. The depression, the addiction, my life kind of spiraling downward. So it wasn't like destroying me, like I'm going to go, you know, get cancer or put a bullet through my head. But ontologically, in the very core of my being, I was being destroyed from the inside out. And I knew, like, I just, you know, when you get that visceral knowing, I just knew. Yeah. Right. So within a few months of that, I wrote my second empowerment program. My first empowerment program was my work around time, which I then called energy management, now called calming the chaos. But I, so I wrote my second coaching program, which was called life design. And it was very funny. I was in bed one night, it was November, maybe October of um, 2008. And I got this whole download before I went to sleep that night of like the steps and the formula, the same thing I still teach today. I got it in 2008. And, um, and then I was laying in bed like, oh, man, I'm so excited. I love this. Oh, what am I going to call it? What am I going to call it? It's like, oh, life design 09, that rhymes. And that was it. So I launched it in January of 2009, the life design course. And I've been teaching it ever since. And I now have about, I don't know, 30 or 40 coaches from around the world who teach it as well. And um, so I, yeah, that's a little bit of my path, my journey around life. Oh, and then money, right? So then, right? So I love this, like time. And then I wrote the course on life. And so I'm a consciousness teacher, but people don't think about like, oh gosh, I just, if I could raise my consciousness then everything would be better. Mm-hmm. They're like, how do I get, how do I manage more time? How do I handle my money? Straight? Right. Money and time are big things. So I wrote a book yeah. on consciousness about money. Because the other thing that I've done you know, which I'm just so humbled by this is these principles took me from homeless to seven figures. No, not overnight. And, you know, I'm not Grant Cardone. I don't have my own yacht and, you know, two helicopters and a jet, not that, but yet seven figures. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I claim that for myself, but, um, <laughs> you know, but I do claim abundance and prosperity and generosity and, and, uh, success. I claim that for myself. And the more I become a clear channel, for life occurring through and as me, the more I have that experience. So time, life, money, um, conscious living uh, around time, money, and life is really the body of my work. So if people are held up in any of those areas, I, you know, the other thing I say about my work is I'm an activator. Mm. I'm an activator because I'm more of an ass kicker than a hand holder. So when people really want to get activated, like they're like, okay, no, really, I really don't want to live this way any longer. I'm a really good coach for that. And I'm not an ass, like, not like just kicking people's butt, you know, but so I have compassion, ruthless compassion sometimes. Ooh, ruthless compassion. I love that. Yeah. That's a distinction from landmark education called ruthless compassion, meaning that you come at this just with an open heart and all kinds of empathy for the experience that people are having. And, you know, uh, a really strong stand holding the highest bar for people to step into their greatness. The experience people are having. Let's talk about that because okay. people and their experience they're having with money, a lot of them, it's not great. And yet they're bound and determined to continue holding on to the not great experience. I, you know, I think people don't know that there's an option. I, I really do think people end up, you know, through experiences in life feeling so um, disempowered. They just don't know that if they begin living life from the inside out rather than the outside in, that they will develop that sense of clarity and power and creative ability to be able to go create what it is they want in life. So my, so the work that I try to do with people, that I do do with people, is helping people 
And again, this, this phrase, live from the inside out, knowing who they are, what their purpose is, you know, why they're here, who they are, what they value, what their contribution in life is, where they're going, and how they're going to get there. <laughs> mm. Whether at, that's with you know, life in general, their career, time, and money. I, I, you know, awakening is really important to me. So to me, you can't separate personal development and spiritual development. They're one and the same. So yeah, some of my work is just, you know, in businesses, doing leadership, you know, training and development, helping people understand what transformational leadership is, leading from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And then some of my work is with individuals, you know, helping them design their life from the inside out, creating the experience that they want to have based on who they came here to be. So that sense of people getting disempowered about life, honestly, I think it's because they don't know who they don't know who they are and they don't know how powerful they are. So they end up living what I call a default life. They live a default life. It's like the good and it's, and it's not a bad life. Isn't you know lots of really successful people out there just doing the next thing. I got the education and, and you know, you know, I got the spouse and and then I got the divorce and you know, I bought the house and I got another spouse. You know, we kind of go through these steps in life that are prescribed for us. And then at some point, people wake up and like, whose life is this anyway? Who am I? What am I doing here? Mm -hmm. And those are the places that I help people design their life from the inside out around time, around money and life itself. But what's the, what's the connection for someone who's listening to this going, yeah, okay, so... I agree with all that, but what does this have to do with money vibe and how does it all connect in the middle? Yeah, so it's a great question because all everything that I just said relates to the vibratory pattern that you're living in. So when you're living your life from the outside in, like, oh, I got to get more money and oh, that, that was a bad decision and oh, that all these externals, what you're creating, and again, I need to back up and say a little bit about this. Your vibration, the vibratory pattern that you live in, and this is science, not hairy fairy like philosophy or anything. If we hook you and I up to an, an EEG, put electrodes on our head, and I meditate and go into a peaceful state, and you watch a violent video game, our brainwave energy is going to be doing different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking around stressed, anxious, you know, uh, uncertain about the future, just feeling all of this pressure, you create an energetic vortex around you that if you will repels your financial good from you, from you. And if you live in this state of sufficiency and belief and, and just knowing that life is unfolding for you, not to you, life is benevolence. And therefore I am the benefactor of life's benevolence. Then you have a completely different experience. I say you connect at a different level of the vibratory pattern of life itself. Have you ever noticed, I mean, that this is actually social science research, your net worth will be the sum total of the average net worth of the seven people that you spend the most time with, right? So there's like attracts like. So you will be like the people that, uh, that have the same vibe that you have. So one of the best ways of really just bringing more money into your life is paying attention to what is my vibe, meaning, am I feeling you know, resigned and apathetic and just, you know, that's the lowest level of consciousness. I call it survival consciousness, mm -hmm. which is like, you know what? Life is hard and just screw it. It's just too much. I can't be bothered. I'm just going to another day, another dollar, golden handcuffs, right? I've got a good mm -hmm. enough job. It's fine. That's what I call survival consciousness. And then when people grow out of that and get a little more energized, then unfortunately they move into what's called stress consciousness, which is still life is hard, but damn it, I'm going to do something about it. I got to get the job. I'm going to get the promotion. I'm going to get the extra education. I'm going to take that workshop. And there's this sense of, you know, anxiety and drivenness and it's, you know, chaotic and pressure and anger that it's not going in a, a better way, much more activated than the lower survival consciousness, which is like, ah, it's too hard to screw it. In the higher level stress consciousness, it's like, yeah, and nah, it's hard, but I'm going to dive in. But it's still life is hard, right? Mm -hmm. So you create more, you have more attracted to you because you're putting out more energy in that level of consciousness. But it's exhausting, man. It's mm -hmm. exhausting, right? 
So then as you grow in consciousness and listen to a webinar like this, or, uh, you know, you go to a church service that inspires you, or you go get sober through AA or 12 step, you do some work on yourself. You start living from the inside out, right? Then you can move into what I call transformation consciousness, where you're like, you know what, life just is. And you're clear about who you are and you're more optimistic about life itself. You, your beliefs about life are a higher vibration, like life is always unfolding for my good. So when you move into these higher realms of consciousness, you think differently, you believe differently, therefore you act differently, therefore you create different outcomes and you attract different kinds of people. You attract different people into your life. Have you ever noticed the kinds of people that might go to a, you know, uh, the CPAC was just this week, um, Conservative Political Action Committee, uh, or that might go to a, a rally supporting Donald Trump, all have the same kinds of thought patterns, belief patterns, the way they perceive the world are all very similar. And then, I don't know, somebody who might go to, you know, the New York Museum of Art would probably, you know, if you gathered all those people, they would probably have similar values around you know, art and aesthetic and, and, and caring about that kind of approach to life, You're, you, you put yourself in the vibration that you are. And then you attract into your life people have, who have similar vibratory patterns. So just to give a concrete example of this, years ago, I was a mental health consultant and psychotherapist. And a friend of mine was setting up a program uh, that I had particular expertise in. Uh, it was a mental health program for deaf people. I'm fluent in sign language. I know deafness very well. I've been a part of that community. So she was setting up a program. I was independently, you know, independent contractor. I was self-employed. And she kept calling me and saying like, hey, you know, what, what, how do I do this? And then she called me, how do I do that? And, how, and, and, and so I tell her and tell her. How, so third or fourth call, I was like, hey, you know, why don't you just hire me to do this? She's like, really? I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, do you have time? I was like, well, do you have money? <laughs> <laughs> and uh money i've got time you know like anyway so because of my vibratory pattern believing that life is always unfolding for me my confidence that things unfold for good even though i didn't know that much about her company or that much about exactly what it was she was setting up what i could do was believe that it would unfold for my highest good and she was someone with similar vibratory pattern similar values yeah. Well, that ended up being a 10 year consulting contract for me. So that's how it translates to money. 10 years of contributing, 10 years of new relationships, 10 years of creating something that didn't exist before. So that's why I say that your vibe really relates to how you relate to the world, how you perceive the world, and then how you activate yourself inside of it. So is your vibe then how you interact with fear? Well, at a high enough level of vibe, you don't have fear. So a high enough level of consciousness. So I'm talking, when I say vibe, I'm talking, let me back up a little bit. Great question. So I define consciousness as your vibratory pattern, the, the vibratory pattern of your beliefs, emotions, attitudes, and thoughts. So fundamentally mm -hmm. your inner world. So if I have a belief that life is hard, and I've got to kick and scream and make things happen for myself and that life is not hospitable. Life is not benevolent. It's just life is hard. Then I am likely to have the experience of fear moving into something new or thinking about taking a new, making a, a risk, taking a risk, moving down a new avenue. Very likely, if I have a fundamental belief that life is hard, I will experience fear in that, fearfulness. Mm -hmm. If I have, a belief that life is benevolent, then I'll be like, woohoo, you know, let's go. Because no matter what, I'm gonna succeed or fail, but things are gonna turn out in a way that's positive and a blessing and a benevolent, whether I succeed or fail. So the fear, now sure, maybe I feel anxious getting up on stage or, you know, maybe taking on a new thing. I might feel that fear, but this is one of the things I say about the benefit of my work. You're no longer, when you raise in consciousness and start living from the inside out, you are no longer given just by pure emotion, right? So I mm -hmm. might feel mm -hmm. the same kind of fear that someone else like, oh shit, you know, what's going to happen? And I don't know about this, but it doesn't drive 
who I am. It doesn't drive the decision. I can acknowledge the feeling, put it in its proper place. I'm a human being, you know, who has thoughts and emotions like everybody. So I can have the emotion without the emotion driving me, causing my, generating my decisions, Mm -hmm. what generates my decisions is transcending emotion, just pure emotion through the use of my intellect to think and reframe. But then even beyond that, tapping into my inner knowing, Mm -hmm. intuition, guidance, that quiet, still small voice where you just always know. What would you advise for somebody who's, they're listening to this and they're going, yes, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to raise my vibe. I'm going to start believing and walking into that belief. Even if I don't fully believe it yet, I'm going to start acting differently so I can start training myself to feel differently. And inevitably you're going to hit some walls and you're going to not get through. How do you, what do you advise people to do to stop themselves from not moving? Boy, it's a complicated, you know, it's, it's a complicated answer. So it's not a three quick steps. So the first thing I would say is pay attention to the quality of your inner world. And one of the best ways of doing that is to become a meditator. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, I tried that before. It didn't work. And I say, well, what do you mean it didn't work? And they're like, well, I tried to meditate, but my mind kept, you know, going off. I'm like, that is meditation. <laughs> and you bring yourself back to your breath or to your mantra or, and then your mind goes out like that is meditation, right? So anyway, so being super, super, you cannot do any of what I've talked about without this one quality of self-awareness. You cannot raise your consciousness without being self-aware. There, I said it, right? So a lot of spiritual teachers and consciousness teachers say that awareness and consciousness are the same thing. I say they are not. Mm. So I teach in, in my philosophy, my approach, that your awareness is your access to be able to observe the level of consciousness that you are living in. So, so you have awareness of your vibratory pattern, of your belief, of the emotion, of the thought. So like right now I'm here, I'm aware that I'm excited and enthusiastic to talk to you. I'm aware that I'm a little concerned that my dog keeps barking outside. (laughs) (laughs) I'm aware of that, but because I'm aware of it, I can move into the flow of the energy and enthusiasm that I feel having this conversation while simultaneously setting aside, not responding to the angst that I might feel about my dog. So I'm aware of both things. And then, and this is again, a very sophisticated concept, Use your mind to train your brain, right? Through awareness of, okay, you know, my thought's fine. You're being able to observe that thought and then direct my brain of how I'm going to respond to it based on using your mind. Again, some teachers use those words simultaneously or um, what's that word? To be the same thing. And they're not the same thing. Synonymously, that's the word. Some Mm -hmm. people use them as synonyms awareness and consciousness or mind and brain. Mind and brain also are not the same thing. Your mind is your your conscious ability to direct the organ of your brain, just like uh, your eyes and seeing are not the same thing. Yeah, I love that analogy. Right, I, I have an eye that allows me to see. I have a brain that does many, many things, but one of the, the functions of the brain is to generate thoughts in mind, then the mind can decide where to direct the brain, right? So they're not synonyms. So first thing, it all starts with awareness and awareness and consciousness are not the same thing. Hmm. One of the avenues for increasing self-awareness is meditation. Another one is journaling, just spontaneous writing of what your thoughts are. Spark it with a question uh, or an affirmation. Now I always have, all my wants and needs are always fulfilled. And then do spontaneous writing to that, to that phrase. My wants and needs are always fulfilled. That's bullshit. What do you mean your wants and needs are always fulfilled? Remember when you were 17 years old and you didn't get the car that you wanted and you didn't get into the college, right? Like just puke up the furball. Cause then, right. If you give it a thought, your mind is your brain, your the ego is going to respond to all of this. 
that's how you get to know the quality of your consciousness. Just start paying attention, writing an email, you know, especially if you're like pissed off at somebody, write the email, really look, what are you saying? So, so much of my work revolves around, first of all, just being aware of what you're thinking, what you're saying, what you're doing. And let's face it, most people are pretty unconscious. Well, we are now at the end of our time, unfortunately. Ugh. So I'm just the, getting warmed up. I know, I know. And because I have the pleasure of your company uh, more often, and I would love to increase it because you're fantastically inspiring. I know that people are going to want to get in touch with you. They're going to want to learn more about what you do. Can you tell us really quickly about your books? And I'm going to drop those links when we post this. So the links will are down below the video I've learned in YouTube. They're down below along with a link to Jackie's website. But can you tell awesome. us a little bit about your product services and others? Sure. So um, my website is JackieWoodside.com. That's really easy. Um, I have a great um, mind, mental, sorry, money, mind, intention experiment called the 30 day money vibe challenge. And that is uh, www.moneyvibemethod.com slash 30 dash day dash challenge, 30 day challenge with dashes in between moneyvibemethod.com. That is, so that website has my money vibe book. It has the, the free 30 day challenge, which I've seen people generate anywhere from $500 of unexpected income to $106,000 of unexpected income in 30 days by doing that intention experiment. It's extraordinary. So there's that. My productivity book is called Calming the Chaos. It's a great book around self-management and time. Um, so you can find that on my website or on Amazon as well. And let me see, what's my other book? Oh, Time for Change, The Essential Skills for Managing the Inevitable is my other book. And then I just launched a compilation book called Younger Self Letters that became a USA Today bestseller. I also know, and it will be on rotation. So depending on when you're watching this video, you may or may not be able to get access to this, but you run a six month masterclass and you, people in it have personal access to you. Can you tell us quickly about that? Yeah, sure. So the, the six month Money Vibe Mastermind group is a small, personal, intense group uh, focusing on what is our money vibe, elevating our money vibe and setting an intention every month for how much unexpected income we plan to bring into our lives. And it's, it involves both uh, coaching, meditation, practices. So coaching to kind of deal with your blocks and levels of belief and you know this can't happen to me, that kind of, you know, coaching with people, uh, group and individual and um, practices, spiritual practices, uh, consciousness practices, writing exercises. So for six months, and it, you know, it's just going to be a game changer for people. If you are like, hands down, I'm going to bring more money into my life. That's a place that you want to be. So the Money Vibe Mastermind, and that is on my website, jackiewoodside.com slash coaching programs or something. If you look for coaching programs, it's on my website. And for anyone out there who's watching this, and I'm, I know I don't normally do this, but I cannot express enough. We can get the tactics. We can find tactics. You've got a thousand and one tactics. If you're watching this video, I know you have tactics coming out of your places right but what we're missing is the support and mm -hmm. the dedication of the people around us to get us where we need to go it's like the number one thing people talk to me about i wish i had more support i mm -hmm. feel like i'm alone courses like jackie's are what you can get involved with to not be alone and especially if you don't have a supportive environment around you you need these sorts of things and it's not that you're investing in something that is not really important because you are the most important thing in your life. Right? If you don't take care of you, nothing around you works. Yeah, the community of people, you know, there's nothing like being in a community of like-minded, high vibe, high consciousness, high energy people who are up to something. It's, yeah. I'm so, so excited about that and the, the, the relationships that get formed. You know, people really underestimate the degree to which transformation happens in relationship with other people. You know, yeah, reading books are great. Watching a webinar is great. But until you are in relationship with other people, that deeper level, more sustained change does not happen. Yeah. And 
one month is beautiful, but to really lock it in, yeah. we're, we're looking at new neuroscience is showing 90 days right. for full lock-in. That's right. three months, people. Yeah. And yeah. another side note, which is just kind of fun because I was talking to Jackie a couple of days ago, actually, and my husband, I found out, is taking her 30-day challenge. And I asked him, I said, what is your goal? And then I sort of threw up to the universe a goal of my own. And within the last few days, a surprising $390 has come into my there life you go. randomly. Right? It's, it's astounding. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many hundreds of stories like that that I have. Yeah. And it just, maybe if I hadn't heard it, I wouldn't have noticed the money. And I think yeah, yeah, noticing yeah. the money helps the money multiply. Yeah. And, you know, being grateful, looking everywhere. I, I, I know we're wrapping up, but I just, the thing I teach about money vibe is most people are living in scarcity and insufficiency and fear. And the vibe you have to live in, I call it the four E formula, is the energy, it's the first E, of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy, like looking everywhere, like a kid in a candy store, which one, you know, where's my good going to come from? Where's my financial good going to come from? Where's that unexpected money coming from? Like really looking for it everywhere. And that's what has it show up in your life because you are like giving loud and clear to the universe, like bring it on, baby. Where's yeah. it coming from? And I'm yeah. grateful in advance and I'm excited and I'm enthusiastic and I yes. expect it. I expect good to come my way, not attached, expecting my good to come my way. And grateful when you see the dime, not saying that's not enough. That's right. That's I've wrong taken message. Pictures. That's right. I've taken pictures of a coin on the on the road when I'm doing the challenges. I'll take a picture of the coin on the road, say for this too, I am grateful, put it in my pocket and keep going. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Or if I go out to dinner with a friend and they pick up the tab, you know, like, and this, I'm grateful. And I include that in my 30 day challenge tally. And I keep track, you know, in my phone, I keep a memo, unexpected income that comes my way during the 30 day challenge really have to put the energy to it. So people don't understand that. They don't understand that it's your vibe, it's the vibratory pattern, your consciousness that you need to manage. And if you're walking around, yeah, I hope it turns out, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. Will this work for me? That's just not the vibe. Baby. It works with the neuroscience too. What you notice, you create more of. You exactly notice right. the, the reticular activating system is what yes. that's called in neuroscience. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie, it has been absolutely a treat. We're definitely going to bring you back again. There's so much more and I can't wait. Awesome. It's so day. good to work with you. Thank you.